twink, 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 twink. Hey, story timers. Welcome to story time at the Neil Cochran House Museum. I'm your storyteller, Karen. This week, I wanted to share this lovely print with you. It's actually a print made from a John James Audubon. John James Audubon was a naturalist who went around and painted the natural world around him. Similar to some of the other stories we've heard and some of the ones we will in the future. I particularly wanted to share this one with you because of the birds. This week's story is called Beach Bird and it's about a bird and his daily life. So what do you say we get started? So get comfortable, grab your blanket and let's go. Beach Bird. by Carol and Donald Carrick. To Jane Damroth. Just after dawn, the geese rose from Wilson's pond. Their honks and splashes woke the seagull who had floated all night in the quiet water. The gull flew over the dunes toward the ocean. Sand drifted inland, pushed by the shoulder of the wind. It was held back by the beach grass, roots driving deep in search of water, leaves reaching above the blowing sand. The sun rose higher in the sky. A wolf spider crept to the shade of the beach plum, away from the searing heat that could dry up his blood. Row after row of waves raced one another to shore. The seagull floated up one side of a wave, disappeared behind it, and floated up the side of the next. As the tide went out, it had left quiet pools protected by rocks from the hammering waves. The rocks were overgrown with seaweed like mermaid's hair and hung with chains of shiny mussels. A starfish crept out from its cave. It struggled to force apart a mussel shell and eat its tender body. The gull flew along the valleys of the waves, watching the sandy bottom. He dropped to the water, ducked his head under, and rose with a moon snail in his beak. He circled high over the beach and dropped the hard shell to shatter it on the rocks below. But swooping down to grab his prize, he lost it among the other broken shells and stones. The hungry bird joined another gull perched on a rock. They let small waves wash over their feet. When larger ones broke, they flapped above the spray and settled back again. The two birds carefully examined the seaweed. As the tide came back in, periwinkles began to slide over the rock, scraping off the plants with their toothy tongues. But before the snails had finished their meal, they were eaten themselves by the gulls. The gull washed his beak and with it preened the feathers that kept him waterproof. He flew across the island toward the sound, passing over swallows nestling in the cliffs. The night before, horseshoe crabs had crawled out of the sound to lay their eggs. One too slow to leave with the tide was still on shore. The gull swooped down to flip her over and eat her soft underside. But digging with a sharp shell and strong legs, she soon bulldozed safely under the sand. High above the beach, a mother osprey sailed in wide circles looking for fish. Back in her nest, open mouths were screeching. The gull saw a spider shape moving along the muddy bottom. He dropped to the water, struck with his beak, and came up dangling a crab. Carrying his struggling catch to the beach, he stabbed open its shell. But a few feet away, he saw the remains of another gull's meal. While he greedily went to investigate, his own half-eaten crab headed back to the water. 
Seeing his mistake, the gull finished the dinner he had almost lost, leaving only 10 crab legs that were now still. The channel that ran from Herring Pond to the Sound were speckled with gulls. The herring had laid their eggs in the pond and were returning to the sea. As the fish crowded through the shallow waterway, they made an easy target. Excited by the cries of the others, the gull swept down through the squabbling birds. He spent the rest of the afternoon at the herring run gobbling fish stealing scraps and dropping his own beakful to scream warnings at gulls who came too close. Finally, he could eat no more. He flew steadily towards the piece of Wilson's pond. The geese had also returned for the night. They bobbed gently now and then, dipping their dark heads to pull up dripping water plants. A pair of swans about to take their hatchlings for a paddle hissed at him as he landed. Weary of confusion and battle, the gull left. Sandpipers were running up the beach ahead of the incoming waves. As the water washed back into the ocean, they poked into the wet sand for mole crabs. Along the high water mark, other birds turned over shells and bits of wood and searched through dry seaweed. Fog moved in, daylight, and the hunting birds left the shore. Safe for the night, Shellfish, half buried in the shallows, pumped water in and out, sifting food from the surf. Beach fleas began to clean up dead fish and bits of sea lettuce. The gull's fierce bill was hidden in his snow-white feathers. He slept, standing by the edge of the sea. The end. Wasn't that story so much fun? Something completely different, right? A story about a bird and what his daily life is like. Can you just imagine living your life, flying high above the waves and the sand, just in search of life and fun and food? Oh, I wish I could fly. Well, if you enjoyed that story, be sure to tell your parents to go to nchmuseum.org and sign up for our email list. Then be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Until next time, take flight story timers.